Hi there. This is Weekly Geek with Megan and Mark. Hi, I'm uh, Mark, and this is the Lamoille Union's Weekly Geek. We're in the Fantastic Library Media green screen room. Yes, we are. We're in our studio, which we love. And we got a couple of quick tricks and tips to tell you yes, about. I'm going to start this week because Megan's nice that way. So we have had a... I don't want to call it a rash, but a... Ooh, that sounds really <laughs> negative. Never mind. We've had a rash of people using uh, Goose Chase. A run-on Goose Chase. That's a, I like that better. <laughs> so we've got a run-on Goose Chase. So Goose Chase is a great scavenger hunt app that we may have highlighted uh, last year at some point, but we wanted to bring it up again because the fantastic Kate Ornstein, otherwise known as Kate McCauley, up in the uh, middle school uh, literacy teacher has been using uh, goose chases on team. We used one for professional development and... Yeah. And the great Whitney Kalbach has been working on a goose chase for commodities, which is pretty cool. Absolutely fantastic stuff. So a goose chase is just a digital scavenger hunt. And you put together missions. You can pull some silly ones out there too. Here's one that we did for a digital, uh, a digital citizenship class that uh, we ran where people had to find different things about digital citizenship. And the way we set up our missions on this was that we had kind of a point that people wanted to prove, like some yeah. evidence of learning perhaps, okay. and then something goofy that they had to do as well. So they did it in teams, and they had to act stuff out, like for example, the cyber upstanding. Uh, create a scene where you and your group are standing up for someone who has been bullied. Bonus, add an explanation of upstanding versus bystanding. And the nice thing is, Goose Chase kind of formats it like Instagram, mm -hmm. or one of those mm -hmm. sites where you're posting pictures, yep. and the kids know how to run with that, so they're really taking to it. Right, right. It's a web, it's not a web app, it's an app that you download onto the iPad, mm -hmm. but it's designed for iPhone. So if you do a search for Goose Chase, make sure you click iPhone only to pick up the right app. Right. The other big limiting factor is they've really designed this app as a tool for, I think, uh, corporations, maybe cruise cruises. So you are limited to 10 teams for free, right. which means you got to do some organization, put your teams together. You can copy your goose chases to multiple classes without a fee, so you can kind of run it that way. But you can't have a whole class in there doing it at the same time. Take some teamwork anyway, but that's the fun part about a scavenger. Yeah, hunters. and it's nice to be Being a team and figuring out, doing some problem solving with your classmates. So the thing that makes this beyond a regular old scavenger hunt that yep. Megan and I used to do, or I used to do back in the day, is that a regular old scavenger hunt, you'd have a list of items, yep. and you would uh, cruise around, and then you'd bring your list of items to somebody, and they would check you off. Okay. With this, you've got a live activity feed, which shows the different posts that people do, which is very cool. We're hanging tight as the activity feed comes in here. And this is cool because if people do it in the library, we put it up, we put mm -hmm. the leaderboard up, we put the activity feed up, and then classmates can see what their classmates are doing as it goes. Exactly. And the leader, the so screen. the leaderboard comes up, Top Dogs is on top here, <laughs> you know, we get to go through, and you can see all the different submissions at the end, and you can download all the photos at the end, too, in a beautiful little, like, slideshow. Awesome. So if you've got 45 minutes, an hour, I think these kind of get broken down into quick ones, which yep. I think an hour is the tops so you'd want to do it, 45 minutes is right. really good for quick kind of one and dones but you could also do it over the course of a week too where you had different things in classes that people wanted to do even if it was just sort of capture Megan and Mark together which isn't hard all right <laughs> right so it's a great little app it's free and uh, it's been pretty fun for uh, for kids to uh, to use it does take some tricks practice it a couple of times because uh, coming up with the clues can take a little bit and you want to have a prize at the end yes. and a tip Find someone in the building who's done it if you want to start mm. doing it. So Whitney, Kate, find those experts and get them to help you because that's going to help your process and it's going to be good for them to explain it to someone. And if you can't find those guys, then find or one of these guys. <laughs> All right. Hey, can I do my next tool? Yes, please. So my next tool is really not a tool as much as it is a resource. A resource. Kathy Schrock is a person who's big in the tech integration world, kind of one of the originators of just a lot of stuff, and is one of those people that you kind of come back to every couple of months and you're like, holy smokes. And I noticed that as you're searching things, her name pops up a lot. A lot. So she's really big in the tech world, ed so tech world. Maybe someday we'll meet her. That'd right. be cool. All right. Um, anyway, she went, took the time and put together a period, periodic table of educational technology. Yes. And so you know how, Megan, there's always new stuff coming out. And always. you feel like you got to try to keep track of like all these new things and everything like that. And then you forget about the stuff that was kind of cool a couple of months ago and stuff. And you yep. kind of, you know, you forget that there was this thing called Kahoot that we used to use. Because now we've got Quizlize. 
Well, she's done a great job of putting together a periodic table of educational technology, which I think takes sort of the tried and true, some new stuff, a lot of the old stuff that's really kind of good and is out there, kind of time-tested educational technology tools for people to sort of try out. Okay. And it's a PDF with live links, so you can click on stuff, and it'll kind of bring it up here, Stumble Upon, which cool. is a kind of a classic that's been around for like five years, kind of right. leads you to different places. It's kind of a browser, but it suggests things. Mm -hmm. Kids will know about it. You know, and you kind of go through and you'll see some new stuff that you haven't really heard about a whole lot. Okay. And then some stuff that you have. ePals, for example. Um, you know, uh, let's see, where's another good one here? EduCanon has a nice list of other resources. You know, Wordle. Oh, Wordle. Uh, I like Wordle. So it's a good one to go back and remind yourself of the old stuff. Yeah. That the classics that are still a great things to do. You know, I haven't seen a lot of word art in the last year, but it's a great little thing to be able to do. And then some new yeah. stuff as well. It's nice to have that all organized in one place. By social network, yeah. online learning, multimedia, coding, classroom tools, and education conferences down here at the bottom as well. Cool. So it's a great little resource, just one of those things that you can plug in, maybe bookmark it and say, hey, you know what, when I get a couple of extra minutes and I'm just trying to figure out what's next, that's a go-to thing. Definitely. Do you have another thing to say or are we on to library time? One more? I never have another. Th no. Yeah, go, go for it, Megan. Or do you? It's okay. on to library time. Okay. No, because so... we're already at like six minutes and 20 seconds. Oh, right. Okay. So I'm going to pull my library stuff up because I'm super proud of the kids. I'm going to pull Instagram up. Here we go. I'm going to pop up behind there. We'll pull that in. So if you have been living under a rock or haven't been listening to the announcements, you'll notice that we have book face contests. There we go. It's a little laggy. Um, we're having a book face contest. It's super fun. It's where you replace your face with a book. Um, we have 46 entries. 45 oh. entries? It's crazy. 45. I thought I was going to win. I was telling kids not to do it. So I could ah, win. Don't do no, that. Um, so we've gotten the middle school. We've gotten the high school. We've got a lot of teachers and staff that's involved. That's an awesome one. I know. And they're hilarious. Some of them are super creepy um, and super awesome. That's right. And my thing's not working anymore. So I'm going to move on. Also, <laughs> thank you. Isn't that nice when that happens to Megan too? Right? It happens nice. to me too. Um, so we have a lot of fun ones. Steve Jobs was, I think, the number one base that we use. Yeah. Think four, three or oh. four people. There we go. And it's gone. Anyway, so there's a lot of great stuff. I'm loving it. And who else? We've had so many research projects happening in the library right now. We have Willian and Nunnery doing evolution and adaptation in animals. Yep. We have um, Bologna and Piscatelli doing Europe projects. And the cool thing about that is they're taking um, anything that the kid wants to learn about mm -hmm. in Europe and doing a project on that. They're using book resources, they're using database resources, they're using World Book, which is one of my personal favorites. That's right. And then they're going to put it into a project. And that's inquiry based, right? Yes. So it's really based on starting with a good solid question that the kid comes up with, not just a list of topics. And they're awesome. they're coming up with a goal, which I think is great because that goal setting is so important yeah. to not only life but our PLPs and all the other stuff. So they're discussing goal setting, which I think is great. And then they're going from there, they're we are developing keyword searches and stuff mm -hmm. like that that's going to really help them be successful researchers. And we are loving it. So um, I just want to say thanks to all of those people that are coming in and researching. And uh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to pull that up again. But it's great. And we're really enjoying having everyone in. And Miss Bryant brought her class in to read today. And it's just fun to see kids sit down and read. So the library was packed this afternoon with kids was. doing research reading on their own, all just doing some awesome, great work, because the library here at Lamoille is a fantastic place to be. Oh, thank you. Tears. And this is an ad for Air Server, apparently. Yes, it is. And Megan's iPad on Air Server. <laughs> okay, so I think we're going to wrap it up. If you keep watching, which you don't have to, but you're going to see my videos from uh, the American Library Association Conference. Awesome. And it's just silly little stuff, but me showing what's going on there. That's awesome. So I can't wait to see that and stick around and let us know if you have any ideas that you want to be geeked out on. But try out Goose Chase, real quick one, fun. Check out Kathy Schrock's list of tools. And then, as always, use our library. And vote for the book face when the vote comes out. Exactly. Because there are prizes. <laughs> It's January 22nd, 22nd, and it's the weekend, almost. Happy Friday. You've been geeked. Hi, LaMoyle. Megan from the Weekly Geek, just reporting from the ALA Midwinter Conference. And as you can see, it's pretty big. 
currently in the exhibit hall, which is awesome because all of the library people have come out. We have lots of book publishers, we have lots of um, book jobbers, lots of tech people, lots of database work. We have lots of authors. I've met Jonathan Oxer and I'm about to meet Laurie Hulse Anderson. As you can see, the line goes all around the block. Should be fun. So the great thing is, they give you a lot of books, which is pretty much a librarian's dream. So when you see me on Tuesday, I should be very happy, even though we're starting exam week. Hi, right, Weekly Geek. So right now we're here at ALA Midwinter Conference 2016. As you can see, so many people, so many books. It's pretty awesome. We went to a great diverse books meeting earlier. And I just think it's so great. And of course, as a librarian, this is pretty much the best thing ever for me. So, I'm here in Boston on this beautiful morning. It's about 7 a.m. We've been in line for 15 minutes already. We're waiting for the announcement of the Youth Media Awards. And this is exciting for librarians because we like awards because it helps us figure out what to buy. But it is so pretty here. Just had to share. And when you get a bunch of librarians in a room together, they tend to get really excited about books. So, like I said, 7 o'clock, sun's barely up, and we already have oh, quite a few people in line waiting for those awards. So, from ALA Midwinter, have a great day. So we just got done with the media awards. Oh, there's some really great books that are receiving awards this year. Just wanted one last shot of the exhibits. So much fun. So many books down there. Definitely worth everything. Look at all those books. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. So from Weekly Geek, this is Megan Toll, leaving ALA Midwinter. 2016.